So Better Bus Project is MBTA rerouting some of the um, bus lines um, in, in Waltham. Some go more often, like the 70 uh, is, goes from 45 minutes uh, on the Carter Street uh, commuter rail station to every 15 minutes, which for, for me, that's freaking awesome. I love that. Um, but as you uh, go more north, uh, a lot of the bus lines are either cut or rerouted uh, towards Market Basket. Um, the Ward 3 City Councilor, George Darcy, who uh, represents a lot of North Waltham, he uh, is not very pleased about this. Uh, he is trying to make as much noise as possible um, to, to the MBTA, trying to get them to backpedal these decisions. Um, the most uh, I think effective way that he's doing this is he's trying to get the Waltham City Council to sign a letter uh, and uh, send it off saying that they oppose these things, um, which would make the City Council uh, be on the record. Um, they can give him the floor all he wants, but uh, this letter would mean that they all um, are in agreement. Um, and so that has forced a very large conversation to happen. Um, Senator Michael Barrett was here. Uh, Tom Stanley uh, took the floor with his state rep hat on instead of the city council. Uh, the mayor was there, spoke uh, several times, um, talking about what could be done and if this is even uh, worthwhile. Uh, we saw some councilors disagreeing with George Darcy, saying that they didn't believe that North Waltham had enough bus uh, attendance uh, to make this worthwhile. Some councilors were hoping to get more data from uh, the MBTA. Um, but the ever looming problem is that some of these changes are happening in two weeks. Um, and so a large discussion was, what do you do moving forward? A lot of what Michael Bear was talking about was, what do you do moving forward with these changes? One of the things that was, I guess the, the way the exchange kind of went with uh, Michael Barrett when, when he was getting questioned by like the counselors, like I believe it was Randy who sort of sort of bluntly put it like why is Waltham getting screwed by this and he kind of pointed out that this reflects like current ridership like where where the current sort of density of riders are mm -hmm. and that like a lot of communities are making out ahead from this and that it's a, and actually been pointed out that they should just work with like existing bus services in the city and try to like make what they can work with grants internally so I mm. thought that was an interesting response. Yeah, I mean, a large discussion was the idea of using data. Uh, there was a lot of talk about like, what does the data say? Michael Barrett brought up the fact that the big winners, uh, quote unquote, of the Better Bus Project, they came to all of their meetings very organized. Uh, the, the, the cities came to the MBTA meetings very organized with data to support what they wanted. Um, and and no, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. What what be, what becomes harder is how do you put into numbers qualitative data that says working class people need this in certain neighborhoods in North Waltham. And I think that's what George is attempting to say over and over again is there might not be a lot of attendance in these neighborhoods, but you know, it's a very important for those people in those neighborhoods that these buses exist. And data just doesn't support that. And that's really tough for, for George and for the for those people that are there. Um, and you can't, it's really hard to prove that that should exist when you've got people in the MBTA bleeding, hemorrhaging money, they need to do something. And the data suggests cutting those, cutting those lines. Yeah, and I've kind of consistently been against the grain in the sense that, like, I think the entire premise that the city councilors are working on is wrong in the sense that I think they're so blind going to this. I don't think any of them truly actually ever ride the bus or know how the bus works or have you really even looked very hard at the bus network redesign with Darcy accepted. He's the only one who seems like show any actual like truly caring about this. Um, but if you look at the data and look at the redesign, Waltham is one of the big winners in aggregate. There are, of course, like North Waltham continues to be shafted to the same degree they have always been. Um, 
but across and like the there is like a now like less bus service between Market Basket and and Waltham Common, which is very large. But for every other part of Waltham, it continues to have increased service. We are going to have significantly more buses running through Waltham after this redesign than we had before. Like by every single metric, by like how many people are going to be able to ride the bus in Waltham, how reliable it's going to be, how frequent it's going to be coming, on what days, at what hours the bus is going to be coming, on every single one of those metrics, there are going to be there is going to be more bus surface in Waltham. But because none of these counselors ride the bus or have cared to look into that, like how this bus network redesign affects Waltham in a critical way at all, they are completely oblivious to this. And that for me is my biggest thing about it. Like what a good bus network looks like is, and what the MBTA's goal was, is for us to have across the Boston area to have higher frequency service across more ranges of the day in the places where people ride the bus. And that is exactly what Waltham gets out of this bus network redesign. Like by any, by any metric, Waltham is, by, by any metric except for spatial coverage because of the lack of service in North Waltham, Waltham in every other way is a big winner out of this redesign. And none of the counselors seem to be aware of that, or if they are aware of that, they don't want to acknowledge it. Which is mainly concerning because like, I'm not against us raising hell about you know wanting more service, especially for North Waltham. But at the end of the day, what we should be advocating for is for good bus service. And what we are getting is the good bus service, but because none of our city councilors or the mayor know what good bus service looks like, none of them are aware of that. You mm -hmm. had, um, we had texted a little bit and you had done some metrics uh, on strictly numbers and percentage wise, I thought was interesting. I don't, I don't want to try to quote you. Do you have those numbers in front of you about? Uh, I do have to decide if you would yeah. like. Yeah, so I did a street by street analysis of basically each segment of bus wall, uh, each segment of bus routes in Waltham, where a service is being gained, where a service is being lost, both during the weekdays and during the weekends. So we can see like in these links here, we can access like what the old bus map looked like. So Waltham is way over here. It's kind of you know low resolution we also have what the new bus route looks like yeah this is what the new bus route looks like in waltham and what i've done this map i basically just overlay them with each other so all these red routes these are places where we used to have bus service and we no longer have bus service these dark blue routes are where we used to have bus service and we will still have bus service after the bus network redesign and this light blue segment right here and this light blue segment way down here is where uh, we are going to have new service. There was not service there before. So as you can see, comparing the light blue routes from the red routes, like there is less spatial coverage with this bus network redesign. You know, we are losing out on a couple of bus corridors. But when we look at the number of routes being run through each of these routes, during the weekdays, there is going to be a 50% increase in bus service, like in aggregate, simply because uh, like especially like on this bus route, which goes through Bentley from Waltham Common to Waverly to Arlington, that's changing from what used to be or is currently five times a day, it's gonna be close to 20 times a day. Uh, this segment right here, which goes from Central Square to, Water, uh, to Watertown to Cambridge, that's going, I forget the exact numbers, it's going from roughly uh, 80 times a day to 116 times a day. Uh, and I've done this on a segment by segment basis. So you can see that, okay, uh, in North Waltham, we're getting slightly increased service. Um, some places we're getting service eliminated, some places we're getting new service. But especially it is in these places, it's the Eastern half of Waltham where a lot of the new frequency is um, centered. So like this D segment, this F segment, this K segment, this M segment, bus service is increasing 200%, 50%, 100%. And the important things are is that this is a, this is the parts of Waltham where there is dense multifamily housing. This is where a large, a significant more majority of the transit riding population of Waltham lives. So there's just going to be a lot more of it. And additionally, like weekend service just increased across the board because there was almost no weekend service in Waltham before this beyond the 70 bus. And now is just going to be all across Waltham. People will no longer uh, 
transit dependent residents all across Waltham will no longer be stuck in their homes on the weekends. That's awesome. What you, this five minutes that you just talked about was so much more informative than the hours and hours and hours spent on this. And it was way more, you're talking about counselors not being informed. Yeah, they, I guess they, what you just said is so much more informative than what they just said. Um, and that goes back to kind of what Michael Barrett was talking about, um, about moving steps moving forward, about he, he was acknowledging like these changes are going to happen. Although he did mention that some of them aren't going to happen until 2028, which I was confused by, and I'm not sure which are going to do that. Um, but he was just like, you guys just need to start fostering that relationship with the MBTA. You need to start, you know, refining who's going to be showing up to these meetings and what you're going to say. And he's 100% correct. And George, you know, hats off to him for, you know, standing up for his constituents. But life is all about organizing. It's all about how organized you are for the things that you want. And Waltham is not organized for public transit. It's not something that Waltham champions. And if we can pretend like we care for two months during Committee of the Whole, uh, but what's going to happen after those two months? We need to, if Waltham wants better public transit, it needs to get organized in that way. Um, and I and also I would like to say I really don't see that happening with the current city council at all. Um, I can say that I want them to do that, but I truly am not I'm not I'm not seeing that. But I think what what I'm trying to say is that I hope that a new city council uh, is born uh, and from the ashes, uh, a champion of public transportation uh, occurs. It sounds like even though the new um, the better bus plan goes into effect really soon. Um, it sounds like there still is room for negotiation. And even I was watching video of a November 2nd Better Bus Project um, meeting. It was a public meeting via Zoom. And, um, and a, a representative of the MBTA Better Bus Project even said, we certainly expect to have to work with cities, towns, states, across the region to make adjustments for these new bus movements. So um, as recently as that, they were expecting to have to make changes. So it sounds like it's done, but it's, you know, I guess they update, they were also saying um, in the meeting, um, I don't remember if it was Senator Barrett um, saying that they update the bus routes periodically um, as a matter of course, um, so that there will still be opportunities to look at these issues. And, um, you know, so I think there's a general sense that the passion for representing constituents is appreciated, but just kind of like keep that passion up because there'll still be opportunities, you know, ongoing to meet the needs public transportation wise. And there were definitely some counselors, I don't know if it's just a you know political thing to say, but uh, there were some that were saying that this isn't a done deal. Tom Stanley, even our state rep uh, in his state rep hat was saying he didn't think this was over and that he thinks that there are still things to be done. I just disagree. I mean, maybe that's true. Uh, I just really don't see it happening, especially the MBTA, I mean, like I said, we're not, Waltham is not organized in a way that we champion buses. We can send a letter, even if like, we don't, we haven't even sent the letter. We can't even agree on sending the letter and uh, to be able to change MBTA's mind. I think it's going to take more than that. And we can't even agree to send a letter, which is also mm -hmm. spoiling, I guess, guess the end of that meeting. Uh, but we're, we're asking for more data um, from, from the MBTA. Which is hilarious because they were talking about, oh, I wish wish the MBTA had told us uh, like why they're cutting these lines. But if they had just gone to any of the meetings they were invited to uh, throughout the months of the Better Bus Project, they would have they would have knew those answers. And uh, just to speak up to clarify uh, the timeline, uh, the website of the Better Bus Project and the MBTA Bus Network redesign says that changes will be rolled out in the summer of 2023 specifically, so it may be a bit longer till we see it. Uh, the dates for the rollout technically goes all the way to 2028. Don't know um, what exactly that means, 
Uh, but to elaborate on what Emily said uh, and what uh, Senator Barrett said, uh, yeah, every spring and every fall, the MBTA sends out an updated bus map with uh, slight alterations to the route every spring, every fall. Uh, that's their iteration process. Tom, thank you for making the um, analysis. That was really cool. And I had a question about it, if you don't mind putting your map back up. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, I, this is just a great example of how, you know, discussions can be very different when you're looking at data and, and, and charts than when you're in a meeting having people come in to talk on things, because in a meeting, people put a lot of weight on personal experience. So if someone's there who's going to be impacted, they have more weight than the 10 people who aren't there, even though they're impacted too. Um, but there's also this kind of idea that if you're analyzing something with numbers the way you are, that there's going to be some kind of humanity and common sense that gets missed. So my question is about if you look at the boxes that you have labeled 31, 32, 40, 41, 49, 50, they are they now have the 70A bus or whatever. It's Sorry, it's not called that anymore, but they currently have that bus that comes up through that's going away. And on the map, though, it looks like they're really close to this new bus that's going in on the other side of the highway. So if you were just going by like how many people and how far they had to walk, it might look like um, not much of a trade-off. But the thing is, there's a, a hill, there's Prospect Hill, and there's um, a highway in between. So somebody is currently taking that bus um, that bus line that's marked B is pretty much totally losing access. They don't really have the option to just walk over to that new line. So is that the kind of thing that you think can get missed in a quantitative analysis? Or do you think um, I'm just uh, you know biased because this is something that affects me so it stands out to me? No, I think that's a 100% uh, valid thing to raise and it is something that does need to be raised whenever you're doing quantitative analysis analyses. Um, one thing that I should bring up is that there are lots of ways I could have chosen uh, to represent how bus service changes over time. The reason I chose to split it up into segments is because, um, specifically because of our discussions in the last call we had, uh, where you mentioned how you were going to have less service getting from the market basket area to, um, to Waltham Common. Mm -hmm. So that, that meant I ended up wanting to split up between like the G and H segment on that segment of, of Main Street. So that way it would be obvious when looking at this data that the service on that segment would be cut in half because of that. Um, so it is definitely very important to raise those points to make sure that they aren't being missed in, in the data an analytics, because that is very much true. Uh, the lived experiences of people who actually live with these bus routes can be very affected depending upon what metrics are used when folks do their data analysis. Uh, so making sure you are always speaking up, giving your feedback to the MBTA whenever they send out those surveys, that is the way they make sure that they aren't skipping over anything. They read a letter, they see, okay, this is your lived experience, let's make sure our data actually represents that and you aren't falling through the cracks. Um, so you're definitely right to believe that that is true. And that is why advocacy and always speaking up and replying to surveys and letters is always important. Thank you. 